Hi, welcome back to the Moot Workshop. This time we're going to be looking at a late 40s, early 50s Kellogg 1000 series master phone called the Red Bar Phone by collectors and enthusiasts. Uh, I don't know if it works. I don't have a landline, so it may be difficult to tell if it works, but we're going to go through it, clean it up, refurbish it, and uh, try to make it look as original as possible this time on the Moot Workshop. I don't know the exact year that this Kellogg 1000 series phone was made, but these were made for about seven years from the late 40s to the early 50s. It's called a red bar phone because of that red hang up bar. And this is not the original dial, this is a cheap plasticky thing. These holes here, I wasn't sure what that was about at first, but I looked up the serial number on the back, and this was originally equipped with a press to talk or dial lever, which was used if you were on a party line, for example. You'd check to see if anybody was on the line, and then you'd press the button. So yeah, that dial, that is definitely not original. That was put in maybe the 70s or the 80s. We're going to have to replace that. One of the cool things about these phones was the modularity. Like, notice this thing. I can unplug this. This is the capacitor. It's actually a few capacitors in a module. It's kind of got a seam that's coming apart there. And this is some coils, some inductors. So now we'll start taking this thing apart. First we'll get the old dial out of there. There's a little bracket here on this one side of the hang-up bar that is supposed to be where the cable from the dial is routed. Uh, and they weren't using that, but we are going to put it back the right way when we reassemble this thing. Look how they hacked away part of the lip of the hole here so they could install that dial. That's terrible. I've taken a lot of notes about where all these wires go. Um, even though I do have a wiring diagram for the phone as well, I just want to make sure this all goes back the way it was originally. Every time I accidentally hit one of those bells, an angel gets its wings. You see how that block is coming loose here? It shouldn't be doing that. There's a screw that holds it down in the middle, so something's wrong. And there you see, there's a piece broken off, still stuck on the base plate. Ooh, another set of wings. And there's a sticker on the back here showing it being serviced in 1984, and I love this ugly fast penalty for fraud report. What the hell is that about? Here's the transmitter, basically a carbon microphone. Why is this 
coiled cord so filthy. All right, I'm gonna pry the speaker out of the top of it. You see, it just snaps onto these metal terminals. Now we'll do the same with the microphone. And then we'll disconnect this cable. One nice thing here is that there's little letters uh, molded into the Bakelite to indicate which color wire goes where. The first thing I'm going to do here actually is to glue that broken piece back to the bottom of the connection block. And now it's time to clean everything, which I will present in fast motion, because I know that nobody likes to watch cleaning more than me. Um, I'm basically using a uh, glass cleaner because it evaporates very quickly, it cuts through the dirt, and uh, it doesn't leave any residue behind. And I'm using the ever-present toothbrush, the really the best thing to use for this sort of cleaning. To clean all these electrical connections, I'm actually using uh, some spray-on contact cleaner, which is basically isopropyl alcohol in a can. The outside of the case of the phone is actually not too dirty, except for down in little crevices. But there are little specks and smudges of gray paint that I'm having to pick and scrape off of the outside of the thing. I've decided to leave this label on the bottom of it. It's an interesting part of its history without being just unsightly like that nasty dial. I swear these wires are just disgusting. I mean, look at all the dirt that's coming off of this, and this is just my first pass on it. Blah. Same thing is true with the wire that comes out of it that goes to the wall. Just, oh, horrible. I'll shine up the spade connectors on the ends of the wires with a little bit of steel wool. Okay, now it's time to address fixing this, where they basically broke this away to make this fit. And I know you can't see this from the outside, but I want to fix it, so I'm going to make some measurements here because I have a plan for how to restore the missing section. And the lip of that hole measures out to 530 seconds of an inch thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue some pieces of plastic together as spacers. That'll be 530 seconds of an inch thick, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Okay, I put down some wax paper, put my spacers on top, and now I'm going to mix together some black epoxy putty. I'm using one glove to get the one component out, and I'm going to use the other glove to get the other component out because we don't want to 
contaminate the original containers. And once we got it all mixed up, we'll form it into kind of a rough approximation of the part we're trying to make. Put it on top of the template. And then I'm going to roll it out to being the right thickness using those spacers I made. See, there's some method to my madness. I'm going to cut some of the excess off of the outside of it. I really made way too much of this stuff. After letting it set up for a couple of hours to a kind of a leathery consistency, I'm going to mark it and uh, cut a little bit more off of it to get it a little closer to the final shape. And now after 24 hours, it's completely set. It's time to do the final shaping so it fits into the space. And now that I have it properly shaped to fit in there, I'm going to mix up some more epoxy putty to glue it into place and fill up all the gaps around it. This little dental tool is ideal for this kind of fine sculpting. Something I neglected to get on video was uh, I used a wet finger to do some final smoothing on the putty. And now after 24 hours later, I can do the final shaping with the Dremel tool. The handset has a strange kind of pebbled surface texture. And so ordinarily I wouldn't sand Bakelite, but I need to get that texture off of there. It's just really strange. So what I'm using is some very fine sandpaper. This is uh, 800 grit sandpaper. And then after I've gone all over all of the parts that have that texture, in, including the, the sound cup here for the earpiece, uh, I'm going to go again over all of those with 1000 grit. And then wet sanding it all with 1500 grit to get it really smooth. And then I'm also doing a little bit of sanding around the repair I did on the, the dial hole. And then it's time to start polishing with a couple of different grades of plastic polish, starting with the heavy scratch remover. And then we go through the same process with a fine scratch remover. And now to deepen the color and give it a protective layer, I'm actually going to use black shoe polish, which waxes it up and actually makes it look uh, a little darker and glossier and uh, just rejuvenates it. it. It looks fantastic once you've buffed it all up here. I'm actually using a shoe brush. And that's all the black parts all shiny. But we got one more thing to polish up, which is the red hang-up bar, which gives the phone its nickname. Okay, now it's time to put it all back together.
I managed to get this beautifully refurbished Kellogg dial. And although from my research, it appears that this is not the exact one that would have been on this phone when it was new. That one would have only had numbers. Uh, this was available as an option for these phones at the time. The missing push to talk button uh, would have interacted with the mechanism of this, uh, this hang up bar. Um, and I did some research online to see if I could find a source for that lever. And I couldn't find anybody who had one for sale. And in fact, I couldn't even find very many pictures of what it even looked like, uh, especially not many pictures of desktop phones that had them. So I'll keep an eye out. And if I ever do find one, it would be nice to put this phone back even closer to its original configuration. Because I took those notes earlier, it's really easy to hook all these wires back up again because I actually have a picture that shows which wire goes to which screw. And there we go, all back in one piece. Well, we've got it to a state where it's in basically a good static display condition. Um, I have ideas for the future on how to make it work so that we can, you know, test it. And if I come up with that, I'll make another video. I have to take this. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please like it. If you're enjoying our videos in general, please let YouTube know and us know by subscribing to the channel and leave comments uh, on any of the videos that you like and we'll try to reply if we can. Uh, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time on the Moot Workshop.